Ansel is an integrated innovator, manufacturer, and marketer of differentiated products. Ansel's protection capability is only increasing with brand new technologies. We control our source of supply from materials to manufacturing, we manage imports and regulatory approvals, and we work directly with leading distributors and end users. How critical Ansel's protection is to people doing some of the most important and demanding jobs. And we're achieving all of this while continuing to advance our efforts to protect the environment. Hello, and welcome to our very first Ansel Clean Talk a podcast from Ansel. I'm Rakesh, a marketing specialist here at Ansel, and I'll be your host today. In this podcast series, we will explore the latest developments and products in the life sciences industry. At Ansel, we are passionate about providing the highest quality personal protective equipment. We believe that education and information sharing are crucial to achieving this goal, which is why we've created Ansel Clean Talk. Our hope is that this podcast will not only be informative, but also be engaging and enjoyable for all of our listeners. So welcome to all of you. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the new EU GMP Annex 1, which sets out guidelines for the manufacture of sterile medicinal products. And without further ado, joining me today are two experts in the field, Anne van de Boer and Tim Pressler. Anne is based in Brussels, Belgium. She brings over 20 years of expertise in PPE products and has a special focus on chemical resistance and technical topics. She's a senior technical services and training manager within Ansel's life sciences team. And Tim is based in Grand Rapids, Michigan, has over a decade of experience in PPE products in both healthcare and clean room environments. He's the Associate Director of Sales for the Life Sciences Western Region. Anne and Tim, welcome to both of you and thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Rakesh. Rakesh. Great, so let's get started and dive into the topic at hand today. Anne, I'd like to start with my first question. What is EU GMP Annex 1 and why is it generating much attention in the industry? Sure, Rakesh. So I'm going to try to explain this briefly, but I do apologize in advance if it's going to be too simplified, of course. Annex 1 is residing under the rules governing medicinal products in the European Union, and it's more often referred to as GMP or Good Manufacturing Practice for Medicinal Products for Human and Veterinary Use. Annex 1 is actually a technical guidance specifically for the manufacture of sterile medicinal products. The main objective is to obtain a product free of contamination by applying the principles of quality risk management, QRM, throughout all the stages of production and with a specific emphasis on the implementation of a formal contamination control strategy. The Annex 1 has been fully revised and the publication happened last year, August 2022, and it will come into effect on the 25th August of 2023. Tim, what role does Ansel play in relation to the new EU GMP Annex 1 guidelines? And how does this impact the company and its products? Yeah, good question, Rakesh. Um, Ansel is a global manufacturer of personal protective equipment, and we're unique in the industry by way of owning our and operating our own production facilities. ISO class four and five clean rooms and two gamma radiation facilities. Uh, so why I highlight that specifically to Annex One is that Ansel's portfolio that our life sciences solution vertical focus is on is barrier protection from head to toe, as well as isolator and RABS gloves and various other accessories. Annex One does make mention about these products and best practices, and we can help provide manufacturing information regarding personnel PPE to help our customers meet their Annex 1 contamination control strategies. And what are the reasons and why is there a change being made to the Annex 1? So first I have to quote the publication which says, this current version of Annex 1 is revised to reflect changes in regulatory and manufacturing environments. As a matter of fact, since the earlier version, there have been significant changes in terms of better process understandings, 
and changes in other parts of the GMP. And this new version um, aims to remove such inconsistencies. Also, this new version takes into account advances in technologies, for example, isolator technology. In a clean room environment, it is critical to control the sources of contamination. And what do you think are the most significant sources of contamination? And how can they be addressed during aseptic processing? There is really a wide variety of sources of contamination that can occur within the clean room. However, it's widely recognized that the most significant source of contamination are the operators present in the clean room. So directly linked to this, Annex 1 indeed focuses heavily on that contamination control strategy and in two specific pillars, shifting the critical production stages towards isolators and wraps. And there's a whole section on personnel. I think I will talk a bit uh, more in depth later about this. Okay. And you briefly mentioned quality risk management before when you were explaining Annex 1. Can you explain a bit more on what is the role of quality risk management in ensuring the safety of products during production? Sure. The quality risk management in this context of pharmaceutical industry is a thorough process throughout the entire production cycle of identifying and controlling risks so that the end product, which is the medicinal product or the medical device, is safe for use. And what about the contamination control strategy? Can you explain the purpose and function of the contamination control strategy or CCS? Yes. Earlier, when I referred to risk management, the contamination on all of its forms, whether it's in the form of particles, skin flakes, microbes or chemical residues, it's one of the main risks in medicinal products. The contamination control strategy is actually a fully documented and technical approach to keep the contamination controlled and within acceptable levels. Now, this principle in itself is nothing new. However, with the Annex 1 revision, all the different elements of the contamination control strategy are now defined and formalized and throughout the entire production cycle of the pharmaceutical products. Tim, how does Ansel take into consideration risk management? Is there a specific approach that Ansel takes to improve customer outcomes? Yes. Uh, Rakesh, so Ansel offers a um an on-site observational assessment called Ansel Guardian. Um, it's essentially a comprehensive safety solutions approach uh, intended to help our customers select the right uh, product protection and personnel protective equipment solutions to improve safety, productivity, and cost performance. We can help optimize our customers' hand and body protection programs and contamination control compliance through standardization and documented best practices. Our overall goal is to drive out costs, reduce operational complexities, and improve CGMP compliance. Uh, and lastly, Ansel has dedicated sales support globally to work with our customers on site to further develop Annex 1 contamination control strategies. Annex 1 places considerable emphasis on barrier technology. And what is the importance of using barrier technologies in the pharmaceutical industry? And how does it help in protecting the environment? and products from contamination. The use of barrier technologies plays a very important role in protecting medicinal products from external sources of contamination. Also, it can assist in rapid detection of contaminants in the environment and the products. So literally by using a wraps or an isolator, you're isolating that part of production from the surrounding environment which can consequently be a lower grade of clean room than if you were to produce in the clean room itself. And can you also tell our listeners what is the difference between wraps and isolator gloves? Sure. So an isolator is fully enclosed from the surrounding environment and it uses automated biodecontamination. Often it's in the form of vaporized hydrogen peroxide, VHP. During the entire batch production, there is no interaction possible and as such, the isolator can achieve grade A conditions. They also tend to rely on continuous overpressure, so to make sure that no external contaminants can enter. 
A REPS or Restricted Access Barrier System is enclosed but not fully sealed and the disinfection and decontamination take place when the process is offline. The REP system does offer some interaction, although it will be avoided whenever possible. So whether it's an isolator or a REPS, they both make use of isolator gloves. And Annex 1 outlines details on the selection and assessment of these gloves and also the proper usage of them. For example, there is a paragraph talking about materials used for glove systems and that they should have appropriate mechanical and chemical resistance. Although this is at least to me a somewhat vague statement, I definitely support it. There should be indeed a thorough assessment on the correct gloves to go on the machine, depending on the unique properties of that application. Also for isolator gloves, the frequency of glove replacements should now be defined within the contamination control strategy. And then there's also an important paragraph that talks about leak testing of isolators and that it should happen at least at the beginning and the end of each batch or campaign. For reps gloves used in the grade A, they have to be sterilized also before installation and sterilized or biodecontaminated prior to each manufacturing campaign and the sterilization process needs to be validated as well. So all in all, there's a lot of emphasizes on reps and isolators within this Annex 1 revision. Tim, can you elaborate on the services and support Ansel provides to help their customers meet their clean room and controlled environment requirements, specifically in regards to the isolator gloves and testing options available? Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, the, so the, the Ansel BioClean sterile nitrile RABS and isolator glove range uh, comprises of overall gloves, mittens, and sleeve and glove systems. Uh, they are 100% water leak tested for glove integrity and resistant to VHP, IPA, and disinfectants for sanitization. The Ansel tools and support available to help contamination control strategies within, you know, a quality risk management process are validation packs, uh, which include specific spec sheet, technical data, sample certificates, and anything you need to um, support change control documentation. Uh, various other testing, such as uh, a chemo testing, leak testing. We now have integrity testing guidelines and uh, BHP outgassing studies to help uh, with the review of, of the, the isolator and RABS technologies. Annex 1 guidelines outline regarding personnel on what garments to wear for each cleanliness grade and how they should be worn and done. And what are some of the key points specified in Annex 1 regarding personnel? And how do they contribute to maintaining clean room conditions during production? Indeed, Annex 1 has a whole section dedicated to personnel. I have to refer back to when I spoke earlier about contamination and that it's known that people are the primary source of contamination in the pharmaceutical production process. As a supplier of clean room garments and accessories, there are several paragraphs of interest to us. The sections are focused on assessment, selection, proper usage of and also training on those clean room gowning. A, detail, a detailed description of which clothing to wear for each cleanliness grade is given in the Annex 1, which I'm not going to describe in detail here. So I just picked some of the topics that I thought are of interest. For example, the defined need to wear sterile face masks and goggles in the grade B area. This is definitely a new requirement. Specific to garments, emphasizes on training of staff for aseptic gowning and that they have to carry out a visual check for cleanliness and integrity before and after gowning. Also, there is mention of selection of clothing to limit shedding due to the operator's movement and that the garment qualification should be assessed with a higher focus on particles and particle retention. However, here again, no further guidance as to how the selection should then happen. Tim, what are the answer solutions to the personnel guide guidelines set in Annex 1, specifically in terms of clean room gowning and proper use of gloves, garments, and goggles and other accessories. 
Yeah, so earlier I made mention of Ansel having essentially barrier protection from head to toe. Um, here I'll kind of highlight the gloves, garments, and goggles um, related to personnel guidelines and Annex 1s. So gloves, uh, Ansel offers a wide range of polymers and lengths to address various applications within the clean room from cleanliness, protection, chemical protection, or extractable uh, protection. We also have low linting single-use garments that are strategically folded to aid in aseptic donning ease, uh, which will help with um, a time reduction of, of gowning as well, and address touch points uh, for env environmental monitoring failures. <clears throat> The goggle portfolio addresses uh, personal guidelines to ensure full face coverage to prevent the shedding of droplets and particulates into the environment. So Ansel has a portfolio of single-use, sterile, and reusable goggles. Um, so hopefully that helps address uh, the question, Rakesh. Yeah, thanks, Tim. And what are the guidelines outlined in Annex 1 regarding sterilization and packaging of garments, gloves, and eye coverings? And how do they impact the maintenance of clean room conditions during production? So in this context, Annex 1 refers to the need to ensure that sterilized garments and eye coverings have indeed been subject to the sterilization process and to also visually inspect the packaging for integrity before use. How the PPE is packaged and the packaging materials used is another critical element for consideration, for example, to allow donning without contacting the other surface of the PPE and to prevent the garment from touching the floor. Again, all this contributes to the overall contamination control strategy and keeping that clean room environment clean. Tim, how does Ansel address these guidelines in its solutions? So all Ansel sterile PPE, uh, gloves, clothing, goggles, wraps, isolator gloves, they all have certificates to prove they've been subject to full sterilization process and each product within the range comes with a full validation pack including a product and quality statement with comprehensive test results. Um, all the Ansel Sterile PPE is double or triple bagged in uh, durable recyclable plastic packaging to reduce contamination and includes a sterilization indicator to show the PPE has been sterilized to a sterility assurance level of uh, 10 to the negative 6. Uh, certificates of irradiation uh, or through gamma or certificates of processing through ETO uh, per product lot number can be downloaded through our certificate tool on ansel.com slash life sciences slash certificates. Uh, this will prove the PPE has been um, gone through full sterilization process and all the packaging clearly states uh, an expiration and manufacturing date. Great. I think that's all the questions I have for today's episode of Ansel Clean Talk. We hope you found our discussion on the new EU GMP Annex 1 guidelines informative and helpful. I'd like to thank our guests Anne and Tim for sharing their insights and expertise with us. Thank you, Rakesh. You're welcome. Thank thanks, you, Rakesh. Thank you, Anne. Thanks, Tim. And also thanks to everyone for tuning in to today's episode on the new EU GMP Annex 1 guidelines with Anne and Tim. If you have any further questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on LinkedIn or visit our website at ansel.com. And be sure to join us for our next episode, where we'll be diving deep into the world of aseptic processing, exploring the latest developments in isolator and wraps gloves, and also taking a closer look at the innovative solutions for sustainable packaging in the life sciences industry. It's going to be an exciting and informative discussion that you won't want to miss. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to send them our way. Until next time, stay safe, stay protected and keep on learning with Ansel Clean Talk.